and welcome back, gamers. It's I, Draxanusum, and we are here playing uh, Dwarf Fortress in a tutorial mode. Basically, I'm here to teach you how to play, how to get your door or fortress set up, and all that sort of thing. So this game was created by Tarn and Zach Adams, so thank you, gentlemen. Um, I am playing in the ASCII sort of mode, a lot of people call it the Matrix, um, but I'm also using uh, a uh, add-on pack called Lazy Noob Pack, a link will be in descri the description as well as with uh, the main website for Bay 12 Games, uh, which are the creators uh, of Dwarf Fortress, um, and I'll also link uh, the uh, wiki in case you want to do some sort of research on your own. All right, so this is uh, part two to the tutorial. Um, here we will basically be learning about uh, preparing for your journey. So if you are playing the Lazy Noob pack, it'll actually come with a certain sets of uh, presets. So um, they basically have the description here, and uh, I have this one here, which is uh, one I've created previously. Um, I'll sort of go through and show you how to create this one, um, but that's uh, basically what we'll be using. So uh, for theirs, uh, these are generally pretty good. Uh, two miners, a woodcutter, a mason, a crass dwarf, a fisher dwarf, and a farm and a cook. So here it's two miners, a wood, a mason, a crafter, and a broker, two farm, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm basically going to go through and uh, talk about uh, the dwarves and their skills. Um, we're also going to talk about important items that you might want to bring uh, with you to your fortress and uh, important animals and why you want uh, specific animals over others. So let's go ahead and prepare for our journey carefully. All right, so as you open up this menu, you can see it's quite daunting. Uh, you're going to have a list of your peasants here. Uh, so these are basically the seven brave dwarven souls who want to... Uh, who are putting their lives in your hands to make sure that they get them through the day. So as you can see, uh, there are numbers here that are 10, and then there's all this sort of thing. So at the moment, uh, ignore this. For We'll come back to this in about a minute. So uh, here, uh, there's some numbers. Uh, there's a couple to take note at this point. Uh, points is basically all the points you get um, for everything that you get to bring with you. You already have some points taken out, um, but that's because the game assumes you're going to bring some certain things, and we'll get over to the items page here in a minute. You can customize, so if you want to change the name of one of your doors to, say, a name of your friend or significant other or yourself or that sort of thing, you can definitely change that, and that will be there in the customize. View, uh, V, so uh, let's go ahead and try that. Here it'll sort of tell you about the dwarf, and we will go into this in a later at a later date. Uh, this can actually be useful, so I might go through it now. Uh, it can kind of tell you about the dwarf uh, to sort of... Um, put together the skills you want to have that dwarf. So uh, it'll tell you uh, their happiness, which will be important when you're actually in the fortress. It'll tell you how old they are and the sort of the year, which isn't all particularly that helpful. Um, it sort of gives a description of them, um, sort of like their hair, their body type, um, that sort of thing, so you can kind of imagine your dwarf, or if you're an artsy type, you might want to try and draw them. Um, and it sort of gives some characteristics, so this particular dwarf is strong, but he's kind of clumsy, so he might trip and fall or tumble and that sort of thing a lot. So this here, uh, this particular dwarf, he likes Galena, Nickel, Bone, Opal, Puffin Leather, giant uh, bush tit bone and ducks for their quacks. So uh, when possible, he prefers to consume cap hopper, hake, river spirits, and whip wine flower. He absolutely detests cave spiders. So if this dwarf ever becomes a person of power, all of this thing is that he likes, the galena, nickel, bone, opal, puffin leather, uh, giant bush tit bone, uh, he will basically uh, create mandates around these. So he'll want things made of galena, or he'll want things made of nickel, or he'll want things made with opal, or he will uh, ban the sale of puffin leather, or he will uh, demand construction of something with puffin leather. So that's always something to consider. Um, that's more of a, an advanced level type thing, but it's something to take note of now uh, while you're still learning the game. Um, they also have modifiers, so uh, since he's quite content, um, 
that certain things can make him sad and certain things can make him happy. Something that'll make him sad are cave spiders. So if he sees or experiences one, he'll get an unhappy thought. But uh, if he, say, drinks uh, river spirits or has some whipped vine flower in some capacity, that'll give him um, a boosted happy thought. So they can get happy thoughts from like uh, experiencing a well-crafted bed or being in an extravagant room and that sort of thing. But if they get one of these that they actually like, that'll give them a happy thought um, with a sort of added bonus on the top. So he has great analytical abilities and willpower, but he has questionable spatial sense, meager creativity, and little patience. So this sort of thing can help you determine what job they need. So uh, for example, since he has good analytical abilities, um, you might want to have him as a bookkeeper or that sort of thing. But again, that's sort of a min-maxing kind of thing. For the most part, you don't have to worry about that unless you want the absolute best for your dwarves. And that you can sort of, you'll get over time sort of how to pick and choose. And in the end, eventually, I just want everything done, so I give dwarves a lot of jobs regardless of their uh, abilities. So this sort of also tells you about his temperament and what sort of things he uh, does and likes. He isn't given to flights of fancy. He tends to not openly express emotions, so that might mean he might uh, not get as many social interactions and that sort of thing. He is candid and sincere in his dealings with others. He is compassionate, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day. That's basically every dwarf. He likes working outdoors and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. So a lot of dwarves might actually not have that, so that's a little bit unique. So that might mean, because dwarves can actually get what's known as like, I think it's called a uh, daylight sickness, where they're basically if they stay indoors a lot, as soon as they go outdoors, it'll make them sick, which will give them an unhappy thought, and then they'll vomit, which will also give them an unhappy thought. So that's something to consider as well. But again, uh, that's sort of a later uh, game stage when you're actually more aware of what's going on. So we'll jump back out here. Um, so, uh, G, you can name your group if you want to have a specific name. Uh, we have this name here up at the top. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Osterist, something like that. So you can name it and you can name the group. Embark means that you're ready and so you're ready to go. Save, you'll definitely want to do after you have it built up and we'll go through that once we get there and tab will take you over to items. So here, um, we'll go back to these two portions here. These numbers represent how many points you can uh, up, skill up points maximum you can give to a particular dwarf. Every time you add a skill here, uh, it takes one of these points away and that skill then gets more expensive to upgrade, so a sort of standard level thing. So, okay, so to navigate, as you can see, there's a highlight that moves through these names. Uh, and that's basically with the up and down arrows. Left and right will basically jump between these menus. So if I hit right, it jumps over to the skills. If I hit left, it takes me back over to the uh, peasants. So uh, we are going to jump over. We're going to start on this first guy, and we're going to jump over here. So uh, one of the most important things in Dwarf Fortress is obviously going to be mining. So we are going to want to add skills to this miner. So go over to your numpad and hit plus. And as you can see, uh, that will uh, jump up. Um, and you can see this number change. This basically tells you the uh, expense of the skill. So if you look down here, you're at 270. You hit plus, five points have been detracted, and this has dropped one. And you can take it up. I usually take them to adequate minor. Uh, it's not generally a good idea to give your dwarves uh, lots of general abilities, um, just because in the beginning you kind of need them to focus on what they need to do. Like, you need... I need this room built, I need this bed built, that sort of thing. So you don't want to give them so many things that they're never focusing on something. And you don't want to make them so great at what they do that uh, it's basically costing you all your points to get them there. Remember that they learn as they work, just like we do, so uh, they can always gain their skills that way. So we're actually going to, uh, we're going to go through and give them all of their core abilities, and then we're going to go back and round them out. So we're going to actually want uh, two miners. And uh, obviously, uh, you want to be able to cut cut out your house out of the mountain or the very earth. Um, so that's obviously why you're going to want miner. So the next important thing is uh, wood. Wood is basically 
Uh, next to stone, it's basically one of the most valuable resources. When trader caravans come through, it's something I'm always importing because it's cheap and you always, always need wood. Things like beds. Beds are only able to be made from wood, so whereas doors can be made from stone or metal and that sort of thing, beds can only be made of wood. Um, they're also important like item carriers like barrels and bins and those are most easily made with wood and you can't make them out of stone and metal is kind of expensive for that sort of thing so so we are going to give this guy a carpenter and we're only going to take him up to adequate adequate is usually where i go uh you can always do novice if you want to skimp on the points a little bit it'll take them a little bit longer to do their jobs but they'll uh again they'll learn as they go all right so the next most important job will be this here uh, the grower um, that is basically uh, for obviously growing uh, crops and that sort of thing which will be a main sort of staple for your fortress uh, we will also create a fisher dwarf which will be here it is fisherman uh, but it's actually called fisher dwarf in the game uh, so that yes so that's basically uh, uh, unlike planting um, where planting you actually have to plot out the um, field that you're going to use fishermen they don't need any sort of materials you don't have to build them rods you don't have to build them hooks anything like that basically as soon as they're at the site they can start uh, harvesting fish for your doors to eat so uh, that sort of solves a early game problem where you sort of don't have any food so the next one uh, I think that most people would agree that that's a pretty good general uh, setup. Uh, they might disagree on like how many miners to bring and that sort of thing, um, but for the most part, those are the five general skills. So the next two are basically um, things of my own personal preference, and I think that's good for every fortress to have, and I'll tell you why. So the first one we're going to do is actually a uh, sort of like a bureaucrat not something you would usually think is very useful um, but they are uh, sort of an important part of the fortress um, because in the game you need a manager and managers sort of need skills they need to be able to put things together so uh, we give him what's known as record keeper we give him organizer and we're just going to give him novice because he doesn't have to be particularly great at those uh, we're going to give him we're actually going to give him appraiser. So appraiser, this skill is actually very important, and I'll tell you why. Um, when you're actually trading with other um, civilizations, obviously there are certain uh, skills that apply. So you, uh, if you don't have appraiser, and there are so all sorts of modifiers, like all of these sort of uh, conversational things like per persuader, negotiator, liar, intimidator, judge of intent, conversationalist, comedian, flatter, consoler, pacifier. Those are all sort of like the social aspects. And in trading, you can use those to sort of get better prices, but they don't work as well as appraiser. Like they'll sort of level those up as they talk to other dwarves and to other people. So you don't ever really have to put points into those. But appraiser only comes from actually trying to trade. And if you're bad at it, um, you'll get fleeced in the market. Uh, and if you happen to have a lot of materials that you're trying to get rid of, that might not be a bad thing. Um, but if you don't actually want to pay uh, 10,000 turtle units or whatever um, to 2,000 turtle units you're importing, then um, you're going to want appraiser because you want to be able to get a fair price or at least as close to a fair price as possible. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way and you can definitely give and take based on what you're making. So uh, it's definitely good to have a little bit of that. And if you want, you can maybe drop a few points in some sort of, uh, like, maybe a negotiator. You can drop a point into that sort of thing, but I wouldn't recommend putting too many points into that. So organizer, uh, that is sort of like being a manager. Um, that also applies to things like parties and uh, uh, training events if, it's, if they're a military dwarf. Um, so that's basically what organizer is, um, and since this person will be the manager and that sort of thing, uh, 
they're going to want that to be able to be an effective manager. And when they're actually in the field, we can give them more jobs that he can sort of learn over time, so we don't have to necessarily worry about giving him something a little bit more productive. Repre record Keeper uh, is not necessarily so important in the beginning, so we're just going to leave it at Novice, um, but uh, it's basically keeping track of what you have in your fortress, how many, like, uh, how many food items, how much beer, how many bars of what type of metal, uh, how many beds, how many chairs, that sort of thing. And that really sounds really boring, but it can definitely come in useful uh, later. So this next one will probably be the most controversial, um, but I'll tell you what, uh, why I do it. So this next dwarf, we're actually going to make a medical dwarf. Um, so there are a couple skills that are involved with that. Wound dresser, diagnostician, surgeon, bone doctor, and suturer. So it's these uh, couple of guys right down here. So the reason I create a dwarf with this is uh, the usually, obviously, the way to level those up is with practice. But in the game, there's no actual like practice medical dummy or any sort of thing that dwarves can practice on to get better. So the only way they practice is on other dwarves. But the problem is, um, if your dwarf is bad at medical items, like, for example, if you don't have a very good diagnostician, you can have the best surgeon in the game, but he's going to mess something up because he doesn't have effective information. So, um, and if, say, if you have a great diagnostician, but no one's a surgeon, again, you run into the problem where they might have the best information in the world, but they don't know how to uh, effectively chop out bad tissue, so then your dwarf dies of infection. Um, and that's basically the same across the board. If uh, they don't, if they're not a very good bone doctor, they will set the leg bad, and then uh, the dwarf will have a limp, and he'll be slower for the rest of his life. Um, suture, same sort of thing. So basically, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because you don't necessarily get that. Usually you can rely on a lot of these skills coming across from uh, uh, dwarves migrating, but for some reason the medical dwarves don't come as often, and I've had games where I've never gotten a single one in sort of migration, and I either had to train them myself or I had to bring it along with me. So basically as an insurance for that, I would always um, create one. And uh, so in the game, your actual hospital is, uh, your chief medical dwarf is based on their diagnostician skill, so uh, we're going to bump that up and then we're going to give him Whoops, what did I do? Oh, there we go. So we're going to give him adequate everything else. So he'll at least be general. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but I think it's worth it. And you can see we dropped that down to one, basically, because of what we poured into there. But it's worth it. So now we're going to go back through and give them secondary skills, and I'll explain those a little bit. So uh, I usually try and keep the dwarves, the first dwarves' uh, skills generally the same, so they're doing the same sort of thing. So uh, one thing I will say uh, is don't, on your first two dwarves, the minor dwarves, these two guys here, don't double up their skills in terms, so like Mason basically creates things out of stone. So like if you wanted a stone door, or if you wanted a stone table, or a stone coffin, that would basically be the Mason's job. But if you have them both as Masons, and miners, then they'll both either be doing one job or the other. And so, like, if you really need a room dug out and you have a mason job in queue, uh, both of those dwarves will be working on the mason job, and then you're stuck and you either have to suspend the job or cancel it. So, uh, don't ever double those up if you can, but if it can't be avoided, then it can't be avoided. So, we're just going to give them novice, uh, mostly because we're starting to run low a little bit on points. Actually, uh, I'm actually going to go a little bit higher than novice. We're going to go to adequate as well. This guy, there's another one in graver, which is sort of an end game and or uh, more advanced game point where you basically turn the stone that you've cut out of the mountain smooth, and then you can engrave images in it. Um, so that's not necessarily important to bring with you. You can definitely either train that by smoothing lots of your hallways, things that dwarves don't care as much about, uh, and then do it on rooms and things or you know building designer is actually important because every building workshops uh well mostly workshops but any sort of building that requires to be assembled so not necessarily a, like a farm plot but anything where you put up walls and posts and that sort of thing requires a sort of architect and if you don't have that then the building will not continue so uh 
that's why we're giving this gentleman a uh, building designer. Oops. And it doesn't have to be very good, like I said. Uh, it definitely infers some quality in the building, but in the beginning you don't necessarily care about quality and there's not a ton of that to go around. So here, I actually messed up uh, what I was saying before in the video. So you're actually going to want woodcutter for uh, lumber. Um, and carpenter is basically, obviously, um, the one who turns that lumber into something. So it's something to consider, but you definitely want both of those because you're going to need beds and uh, you're going to need an office very early. And I'll tell you why and we'll tell you how to get that, but that'll be in another tutorial video. Uh, so you're going to want those two things. And then um, as a note on uh, stone and wood, there are two items over here, uh, stone and wood crafter. And there's also bone crafter, but you don't have to worry about as much as that in the early game. So this is basically how I usually um, create things to sell and to trade to the other civilizations. Um, you can definitely bring those along, but if you're just looking for some quick cash, they can learn it on the fly, and I can show you. And I will show you, actually, in the next video, how to uh, apply those sort of skills to tell dwarves, hey, you might not have any experience here, but I definitely want you to work on that. So we'll show you that, but we're not going to spend any of our precious points on it. Whoops, there I go, and I hit the wrong button. So grower. There's a couple of important ones um, here in grower. Uh, so obviously growing the food is important, but then you have to be able to do something with it. So there are a few of them here. There's a few abilities. Niller, Thresher, uh, Grower, Herbalist, Brewer, and Cook. So those, a lot of those sort of speak for themselves. The only one I'm not entirely sure is Thresher. And like I said, I linked uh, Door Fortress Wiki below. So you can definitely look that up and it will actually explain what it does, what the ability, um, what sort of thing it produces, and that kind of thing. So I won't talk too much about that. Miller, obviously grinding up like wheat and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, that's not, that'll be a little bit later in the game. So we don't necessarily need to spend points to bring it with us. Grower, obviously, grow the fields. We went over that. Herbalist, um, basically, uh, if you're having a prop, uh, you can assign this skill. Um, it doesn't take much to get anything out of it, but basically it's uh, picking up things off of the ground, like berries, nuts, herbs, that sort of thing. So um, it can definitely sort of tide you over. It's not the most effective way to get food or useful items. Uh, if you want to start above ground farms, it's definitely something you'll need, but they can learn that as they go. Brewer is important, so we're going to put a point or two there. Um, basically, obviously, this is alcohol, and it's basically one of the main staples of dwarves. It keeps them happy, um, it makes work more effective, and all of that sort of jazz. So you definitely want to put some points there. Uh, you don't necessarily need a lot, because uh, as long as they have it, dwarves tend to be happy, um, but he'll definitely level up as he goes. Cook, a little bit less important, because uh, they can eat raw plump helmets and that sort of thing. Um, but it's always nice to sort of have that skill. And there, as you can see, there are plenty of other skills. Um, and I'll go through a few of them generally, and uh, you can always look them up yourself in the wiki. So here, Fisherman is our next sort of gentleman. And fortunately, these are, uh, there's only two skills. There's Fisherman and then Fish Dissector. And I'm not entirely sure, like I said, if you want, you can look it up in the wiki. I believe Fish Dissector is uh, for preparation of the fish for eating, or it's for turning them into alchemical potions, which isn't necessarily a big part of the game yet, but uh, that's supposed to be uh, in the future where you can use fish guts for some sort of alchemy and that sort of thing. Uh, so those are the only two, uh, oh, fish cleaner, actually. So that's the one we want, not uh, fish dissector. So as you can see, sometimes I even myself get confused just because of how many there are. So that is basically your dwarf setup. Um, let me go quickly through a bunch of these because uh, we're kind of going along here. Um, some of the other abilities that work in groups is weaponsmith, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Boyer, also pretty self-explanatory, basically creating wood and bone crossbows, um, which are very important. 
Uh, weaponsmith would obviously be the metal portion of those creations. Um, Boyer uh, does not deal with the creation of bolts, however. And arrows and bows are used for creatures bigger than dwarves, so you'll never create that. Armorsmith, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Metalsmith, you might say, hey, why is that? I've got these two here. What's this? This is basically metal crafts, like uh, metal shirts, uh, plates, mugs, uh, metal instruments, that sort of thing. Furnace operator, if you want to run a smelter or a wood burner uh, or a kiln, that's basically uh, what the operator does. Wood burner creates charcoal and ash, which have their own sort of uses. Uh, all of these crafters are basically for selling sort of uh, crafts to other people. They don't have as much use. Uh, gem cutters and setters, pretty self-explanatory. Potters and glazers, pretty self-explanatory. Wax worker is just another type of crafter. Uh, you basically use the product of the bee. Um, mechanic, uh, it has uh, several uses. I'm not going to go too much into it. We've already gone through all of these. Weaver, clother, dyer, all self-explanatory. Trapper, uh, not the most useful, um, but you can definitely catch animals and turn them into sort of like domesticated creatures, and that's basically how you do that. Ambusher is a type of uh, battle. It's used for hunting and for combat. Um, it basically means like getting the drop on people and being able to sneak. Butcher, self-explanatory. Tanner, self-explanatory. Leather worker, self-explanatory. So there are a few things here that are pretty advanced. Cheesemaker, milker, thresher, uh, spinner, all of those. Uh, they're actually pretty advanced, um, and they are really difficult to do. Like, for example, uh, milker. Uh, you basically need a female animal, obviously, but it needs to be lactating, so it has to have given birth recently, and then it needs to be chained, and it only gives, uh, milks at certain times of the day and certain days and that sort of thing. So it's really complex, and the only way to, say, like, make cheese out of that is to actually have the milk in the first place. So usually if you want, like, a cheese maker, um, you're going to have to import milk. And shearer is the same sort of thing, and spinner is obviously... Presser is basically, uh, trying to think of what presser does. I, I'm not quite sure, so we'll skip that. Beekeeper, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these are all really advanced. And so one thing I'm just going to skip right to is all of these fighting abilities. You might say, Drax, why didn't you bring any sort of uh, military dwarf? Aren't you worried about evil creatures coming to squish you? And if I were in a more advanced sort of setting, I might say, yes, yes, I am. And that's why I left out, say, uh, uh, the bureaucrat dwarf, because I needed someone to defend it. But um, for the most part, you can train those up, and you'll get them in migration. So you can uh, either use them to create your basis of your military, or just train them from scratch. Both are options, and are kind of expensive, and you have to bring the equipment as well. So... Uh, provided you're not in a very evil place. You can sort of go without a military dwarf for a while. Okay, so that was kind of long-winded, and we are still running a bit long, but still have a little bit to go through, so we're going to do that here quickly. Um, so tab, as you can see, takes us over to items, which are here, and animals, which are here. So if you want to add an item that is not in this list, this is basically what you already have brought with you. Um, if you want to add something that's outside of that, go ahead and hit N, and that will bring up uh, these sorts of uh, menus that are all self-explanatory. Training weapons, ammo, leather. This is basically raw leather, and it tells you the point cost over here, so be aware of that with what you have left. And wood, uh, a lot of this I would say never bring with you. The only sort of thing you're going to need to worry about is... Um, oh, I think my video's freaking out a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Uh, so the only thing, you, you'll never need to really bring anything about that. You'll only ever need uh, to worry about uh, tools, which is in this sort of next uh, page here, or weapons, and that will be... Uh, Well, that'll be in here somewhere. I'm not going to necessarily look through it. And again, this can be uh, this menu can be navigated with up and down, or the eight and two on the number pad. So let's jump back here for a moment. So I'm going to go through animals because they're uh, pretty easy. Uh, for the most part, anything below mule. So mule is here, and you can see the point cost here, and they get pretty expensive. Mules you can use. Uh, 
there's basically male mules and female mules you can see here so you can bring a pair and they will breed and basically give you more of those animals so you can sort of create a meat and bone and uh, work animal sort of uh, farm except it's very expensive and you have to make sure that you create a pasture and you have to make sure they're protected and all of that sort of thing and you have to let them grow up and the more grown up they get the uh, better off they are so there are some things um, actually anything below mule and above dog uh, so mule and below and yak calf and above so dogs puppies uh, basically any of these here cat kitten so dogs are basically like it sounds awful but they're kind of throwaway creatures you can turn them into a war dog um, which is basically a pretty like aggressive uh, it's got some fighting skill not the best fighting skill but it's got the fighting skill sort of um, and you can definitely bring those with you or train them if you just bring a dog you can bring a hunting dog which will basically help your hunters bring down um, creatures faster or you can bring puppies I tend to bring both a male and a female dog just so they can breed and I mean just like any of these uh, you can sort of uh, if you are getting overwhelmed with puppies you can sort of turn it I mean it sounds grotesque and it kind of is but in this game it's pretty normal but you can basically use those for your meat and bone and leather and that sort of thing also I bring one cat never both I never bring both genders of cat and if you happen to have gone to the wiki, uh, wiki uh, cat explosion, and you'll see why. Basically, um, in the earlier versions of the game, cats would immediately make themselves pets of a dwarf, which means you can't butcher it, you can't, you can't do anything with it. If you do, the dwarf who owns it freaks out. It's called a tantrum, and they will injure, kill other dwarves, and that can sort of lead to other dwarves freaking out, and you can basically kill your fortress with a tempered tantrum. So uh, basically, if you had breeding pairs of cats, uh, they would create kittens, and kittens would immediately then pick up their own owner. So, and then those kittens would breed, and it would basically create this cascading effect of more and more cats until the, it basically killed your computer literally, which is why it was called cat explosion. So uh, I never, uh, I, I think they sort of toned that down, but I still, out of habit, just don't bring both. Uh, the use of a cat is it basically kills vermin it keeps things from like spoiling food and that sort of thing so i usually keep one just so they can sort of patrol the fortress and kill stuff okay so you can definitely try as a new player i definitely probably definitely probably i probably would not recommend bringing any of these uh you come with two you have two that pulled your cart it won't necessarily be a breeding pair but it'll sort of be a starting point of things that you can have and create a pasture for so here are all of the tools and sort of things that they I've told you about earlier that they bring uh, that they automatically bring with you. Um, picks um, obviously used for mining. Battle axes used for wood chopping, and if you're in a pinch, um, combat. Iron anvil, uh, as you can see, it costs a hundred points. If you sort of want to uh, try and mess with the startup, you can definitely hit minus, and that will take that away. As you can see, since there's no number here, it means you only have one. So you can throw that out and you'll have 100 points. But the problem is you can't actually make an anvil without an anvil. So if you want to get one, you'll have to either trade it or you'll have to pray to the gods that uh, one of your dwarves will get a mood and they'll make one. But that's a super long shot. So if you're going to import it, you have to make sure that you have the crafts to be able to afford it. Beer. Uh, and rum, obviously drinks, and that is denoted by each unit costing two points. Plump helmets. So that is one of the important things in the beginning of the game. So this, these guys here, and plump helmet spawns are basically their seed. Plump helmets are uh, the new player's best friend. They are used for food, like right out of the ground they can be eaten. You can turn them into meals, which basically is preparing them. Uh, you can turn them into booze, and they are easy to replant and grow quickly. Uh, as a note, if you turn them into meals, you actually don't get the seeds back. So you might want to wait until your uh, farming process is really up and going before you start turning those into meals. Um, but they're cheap, they're great, uh, you definitely want to start with a few of those. So then the next thing is you might want to bring a few of the seeds. Whoops. 
and those only cost one, but obviously they're not in edible form, so that's something to consider as well. The next thing is pigtails. Pigtails are basically used as thread, so you can use them for, they basically, you, uh, um, you process them into threads, and that thread can be used either to create uh, cloth, or it can be used in the uh, hospital as a type of suture. Uh, the cloth can then be turned into clothing, bags, uh, quivers, all sorts of things. So uh, pigtails are important uh, basically because they become the basis of your um, fortress. So just bring seeds, don't bring pigtails themselves. Cave wheat, uh, it can be turned into flour, uh, which basically go into components of making meals, or it can be turned into a type of alcohol. So it's important, but not as important as, say, a plump helmet would be. Uh, sweet pods, uh, basically you just process those into a type of sugar, um, which is used for uh, rum, and it's used to uh, be used in meals as well. So that's even less important just because it's not even a food type. Rock nuts can be eaten straight, um, or they can be turned into a type of oil, which can be used to make soap, and it can be, I uh, believe it can be used in meals. So it's a little bit more important, but these are, are a lot harder to grow. They're not in as many seasons and that sort of thing. So that is still important, but not as important. So just bring a couple of the seeds and plant them when you actually... Dimple cup spawns are the least useful, just because the only thing they make is uh, dyes, which increase the value of cloth and other things, but that's about it. So don't spend a too lot on those. So here, uh, it'll come with some sort of prepared meat. In this case, it's gross uh, prepared bonobo intestines, gross whatever we need food. Cave lobster, just some type of fish. We'll bring a few more plump helmets here. Obviously, thread, cloth, bag, ropes. Ropes are kind of important, but again, it's made out of pigtail. So that's what you know that is. Leather quivers, basically for hunters, keep their bolts in. Buckets, obviously splints, crutches, used in case anyone's hurt. And wheelbarrows basically help you haul uh, heavier items. So that's basically a quick overview. Obviously, hitting plus will increase uh, one unit, and it will detract this number from your points down here. So we have six points left. Uh, so let's go ahead and get another plump helmet, and then we will get a uh, cave wheat and pigtail. All right, so now you have what you're looking for. So uh, in case you, uh, your fortress gets blown out of the water for some whatever reason, and you don't necessarily want to set this all up again, very understandable. I've had to do it many times, and this is sort of a new feature, so use it and love it. Uh, so down here, uh, it, hit uh, S, and it will go to save. One second. One moment, one moment, one moment. Wait, 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 wait. So, okay, sorry about that. So uh, here uh, you hit S and it will give you the ability to uh, save it. As you saw on my other one, I basically called it Medical Dwarf because that means uh, one of my extra dwarves was a Medical Dwarf and I just brought the, uh, um, the standard sort of get up. So you can hit enter and it'll save that and it'll be on the first screen that you saw or uh, if you don't actually want to save it, you can hit shift space. So I've already got this set up, so I'm pretty good. So I will just go ahead and hit embark. And it takes us to the next screen. So here we are, and we are just about to start our uh, fortress. So we are going to go ahead and stop here, and this will be the end of part two, and we'll go ahead on to part three, which is uh, basically the very beginnings of your fortress and setting up dwarf skills and abilities, um, basically beyond what we just set up and sort of getting farming and that sort of thing started. So if you've enjoyed or you found this uh, helpful or insightful, uh, drop a like, uh, leave a comment, or uh, throw me a subscribe. That would be amazing, and I definitely appreciate those. Um, or if you just want to stick by and listen and maybe learn how to play a new game that you might end up loving, that's a perfectly okay thing to do as well. So again, I've been Drax Newsom. this has been Dwarf Fortress, and you have been wonderful, and I will see you next time. Alright, bye bye.